Hey, worship teams and leaders, here is your 60-second extended download for members only. I hope you guys just checked out the new 60-second download I just did before this recording, talking about understanding who you are in God versus who you wish you were. Now, I know that's kind of a loaded statement, because a lot of us already think, well, yeah, but I am in God. I already know who I am. And, but, you know, let me just tell you about my journey to the climb. It wasn't always that way. I thought that, yeah, I am in God, and, and yes, I'm in Christ. I was very confident in who I was. But the difference was I wasn't confident in what I was doing. And see, that's where I, that's where I think it makes the huge difference because, you know, you could be good at what you do, but you can also be lacking the confidence. And that was me. When I started out leading worship, when I started out doing music, I knew I wasn't God. But I didn't know who I was doing the things of God. There, there's a difference, I believe. Because once you... Like, let me just say, for my journey, I started out knowing nothing about leading worship. I thought I knew music. I thought I knew... Yeah, I could do this ministry bit. I can climb into it. That would be good. But really, I did not know what I was biting off. I had no idea as far as the people that I had to minister to, what it meant to be a minister, what it meant to really do music, not for myself, but for God and for the church. And I, I know that we all nod and we say things like, yeah, I get it. I, I can do this. But, you know, the reality is that you don't. I mean, when I look back over the past 20 years of me doing what I'm doing today, you know, I... I knew nothing when I started. And the, the, re, the, the false reality is that I thought I did. I was only just thinking that I can do it and just trying to um, apprise myself to the thought that, yes, I can do all this. But when it came down to it, I couldn't do it. And I had to understand, you know, as, as my journey was, I had to say to myself, it's okay that I don't know it all. And it's okay who God's called me to be. It's okay that I'm not like this person in ministry that I look up to or this record that I hear or MP3 that I downloaded. It's okay that I don't have these things because I know that the greater time that I'm spending is building on it. Hey guys, sorry, I have to interrupt this podcast because the person you're going to meet in this next interview impromptu is a guy that's going to talk about why it's so important to be yourself. All right, I'm standing here with, what's your name? Maxwell. Maxwell, I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you, bro. Brandon, nice to meet you. All right, dude. Hey, tell, tell me, what, how important is it to be who you are versus who you think you were? Um, well, you know, I believe that, um, how do I say, um, you know, unless we, um, you know, I don't know how to, you know, explain it, but, uh. You know, <laughs> what's in your heart? What, what I mean, how important is it to be you versus when the world tells you to be like somebody else? Oh, OK. Well, you know, it's you know, it's I, you know, I'm a Christian, first of all. Right on, bro. So that's um, what this is about. So, um, you know, cool. scripture says that, you know, biblically, you know, we can be who we are, where we are. Yep. And, you know, until we genuinely see the glory, the face of God, yep. we don't know why we're here. Yeah. You know what? We don't know what our purpose is, except, mm-hmm. you know what scripture says you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying so um you know um culture in a a culture you know in a culture sense Mm -hmm. you know coming from where you are i guess it's important to not forget from where you come from you know Mm -hmm. where you're born how you were brought up in that sense you know what i'm saying what's your story Um, where you from i'm from houston sweet yeah i'm too brother sweet (laughs) sweet yeah yeah i'm from houston um i I grew up in kansas moved to kansas when i was 10. i'm actually in ministry school right now at Harvard. oh my gosh see this is like god right now (laughs) okay this okay so so like uh what are you going to be doing in ministry because i'm Um, I'm in ministry too okay awesome man uh i'm in heart of david and it's worship school oh my gosh Are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, all right. <laughs> I'm Brandon of Worship Team Training. Okay. And wow. um, we train worship teams all across country. That's what this podcast is about. Wow. Okay. I'm a worship leader. And awesome. so, I mean, I just walk up to random people and just try conversations. So, I mean, that is so sweet. So, hard, David. Worship school started in Houston. It actually started here in, in, in Austin. In Austin. Yes. Okay. Yes. Who's the leader of that? Uh, Rick Pino. Uh, okay, Rick. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah. Okay. Super cool guy. Very um, good. Our school director is John David Vasquez. Okay. And, um, 
yeah, man, we kind of just like worship for about four or five hours a day, kind of press into the um, Holy Spirit, you know, just kind of, you know, let some stuff that's underlying, you know, come out a little bit. It's awesome to have a community, um, you know, that genuinely loves you and, you know, wants the best for you. Um, it's intense, man. You know, at times it gets to the point where it's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. it's up to you if you want to press in and you want to really encounter God, you know. So, um, so are you a worship leader? Yes, I'm a drummer. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so fantastic. Yeah, where do you, where yeah. you drum at? Um, I actually, I've been drumming all over the place so far. Um, I actually come here for ACF, drum with um, John David Vasquez. Um, wow. I play at um, NW Northwest Fellowship. That's kind okay. of like close to the Round Rock area. Okay. I've played at Harvest Church. I can't think of the town that's at, that's in. And uh, River in the Hills. All right. All right, I'm gonna get your contact so that you can drum for us sometime too. Yeah. All right, so, uh, so tell us like, um, how important is it then for worship leaders, for teams, people who aspire to do something great, but yet they got the barrier that tells them that they can't? Well, um, it's about, it's not about you. It's about the presence of God. It's about him playing through you. It's not about you. It's about the people. So, Awesome. Yeah. Maxwell, thanks for your time, brother. Yeah. I, I think that we waste more time thinking about the things we wish we were versus understanding who we are. And that's the whole point. So what helped me was that I just had to have a, okay, now brace yourself when I say this, I had to have a I don't care attitude, but in God. Another, what I'm saying is that it's one thing to say I don't care about the world and get mad. That's not what I mean. But I had to, what I'm saying is I had to say I don't care about what the world thinks of me but I care more what God says about me and who he says I am because the more I'm able to care less of others, I'm able to care more of the things of God. And then through the caring of God and his things, then comes the people. Then I care more about the ministry. Then I care more about the relationships because then what, what in essence is I'm not focused on myself anymore. So when we're caring too much about the things that we wish we were, it's really we're caring more about ourselves than anything else. That's what I've learned. And that's what I'm still learning today. No matter what ministry I'm doing, no matter how long I'm going to do it, but that's what sets me free. And it's, it's only God's grace that does that because now I have the understanding of, you know, I can make these decisions and not worry about what other people think because I know if I'm putting my 100% effort and God and what he's called me to do, then the byproduct is going to be that people will be ministered, people will be affected in a positive way because it doesn't have my thumbprint on it about me being me, be, making it about myself is what I mean. So, you know, understand it's about who you are. And yes, it is about the fingerprint that you're leaving, but you gotta keep this in mind. It's not your fingerprint. It's God's fingerprint working through you. And the more and more that you wrap your head around that understanding, then it's okay. Then you can let go. And when you're able to let go and not care, you start succeeding more in Christ than what you've ever dreamed. Let that, let his word be your compass. I hope that this encouraged you Hit me up, Brandon at worshipteentraining.com or Brandon, B-R-A-N-O-N at WTTU.co. Members, I love you. I hope this helped. I'm praying with you. I hope you have an awesome week in this holy week of Easter. Make it the best. Make it the most. Care less about yourself. Care more about God. Love you. Peace.